It's September 16th, 2014. That's when NASA chose Boeing over SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser to develop spacecraft for transporting astronauts to and from the International Space Station. The reason? Boeing made a more compelling proposal than others. The contract specified at least two to six missions to the ISS as soon as possible. But then, Boeing spent a whole decade sending Starliner on its first crewed mission to the ISS. And the worst part is, now it's unable to return those crews to Earth, shattering NASA's hopes for the Starliner program. But why did NASA have so much confidence in Boeing initially? What's the current status of Starliner? And most importantly, what really went wrong with it? You might be familiar with Boeing flights, which are used both for defense and commercial purposes, right? They are the best when it comes to manufacturing aircraft. But apart from those, they also produce spaceships, which are called the CST-100 Starliner. As SpaceX keeps making frequent headlines in this sector, Starliner often gets overshadowed. Imagine a sleek, futuristic capsule that's about 5 meters tall and as wide as a small car at 4.6 meters in diameter. Yes, that's Starliner. It's packed with powerful thrusters that help steer it in space. 12 small ones in the crew area, which are called Reaction Control Systems, or RCS. Each RCS has a strength of 100 pounds of thrust. Plus, there's 28 more RCS in the service module, along with 20 orbital maneuvering and attitude control that can push Starliner with 1,500 pounds of force in space. For emergencies, there are four huge launch abort engines that can deliver an incredible 40,000 pounds of thrust to quickly get the spacecraft out of danger. The spacecraft uses two types of chemicals for its thrusters, hydrazine, which is mixed with a catalyst for the smaller thrusters, and a more complex mix of nitrogen tetroxide and monomethyl hydrazine for the larger ones. These chemicals are safe on their own, but can become explosive if mixed in the right way. And this explosive mix gives the Starliner the power for space missions. The crew module of the Starliner is built to handle up to 10 flights, while the service module is only for one-time use. You might wonder why NASA is using these instead of their own spacecraft like it used to do. True that, since the time of the Cold War, NASA has been leading space exploration in the U.S. Their space shuttle used to be the most famous spaceship at that time, being a major symbol of human space exploration for over 30 years. Its primary job was to transport astronauts astronauts to the ISS, which has been orbiting Earth since 1998 and has had people living on it since 2000. But in 2001, NASA decided to retire the space shuttle program due to high operational costs, aging technology, and safety concerns. The shuttle's final mission, STS-135, marked the end of its era. As a result, American astronauts had to turn to the Russian Soyuz rocket to travel to the ISS for some time, but Russia and the U.S. had long-standing political conflict, which was getting intense over the years. So NASA thought it's not a good idea to depend entirely on Russia. In 2011, NASA launched the Commercial Crew Program to collaborate with the U.S.-based private companies for transporting astronauts to and from the ISS. The deal was simple. NASA would give out contracts, and companies would compete to create the best, most affordable, and safest solutions solutions possible. And finally, in 2014, after a long bidding process, NASA chose two companies for this mission. Their first choice was Boeing, which won a $4.2 billion contract to develop the Starliner spacecraft and carry out six missions to the ISS. On the flip side, they also picked Elon Musk's SpaceX and gave them a $2.6 billion contract to develop the Crew Dragon spacecraft for the same. Technically, it was a brilliant move by NASA to set the two companies in a healthy competition that would lead to better, faster, and more efficient solutions than NASA alone could have developed. 
developed. However, little did NASA know that the competition turned out to be less balanced than expected. SpaceX launched its first crewed mission in 2020. While Boeing's first mission is happening now in 2024 with astronauts like Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams, but even with double the funding of SpaceX, why are they so far behind? The first test flight of the Starliner was scheduled for 2016, but it was first delayed because of problems with weight and aerodynamics, pushing the launch to 2017. Then again, it was postponed to July 2018 due to a leak of toxic fuel. And for the third time, it was further pushed to November 2019 because of continued issues. And finally, in 2019, the initial pad abort test was done, which got partial success. The capsule took off as planned, but one parachute failed to open on landing, though eventually it landed safely. Again, in December 2019, another orbital flight test failed because of a timing error, which caused the capsule to miss its intended path and land in New Mexico. In addition, software problems with the thrusters also hurt Boeing's credibility. After a thorough review, NASA found 80 glitches in Starliner software, which Boeing took two and a half years to fix. Finally, they were about to set for the second orbital flight test in April 2021. But at the prime time, 13 engine valves were found to be corroded from salty air. Naturally, the test was canceled. One year later, the spacecraft successfully completed an orbital test flight, docked with the International Space Station, and returned to Earth but it was unmanned. So a crewed test flight was initially planned after that for December 2022, which was pushed back to July 2023, and then to April 2024 due to parachute issues. The parachute design Starliner initially had couldn't handle the load if any of them failed, so Boeing had to redesign the parachute system with a plan to test it in November 2023. But then came another problem with a fire hazard in the electrical wiring tape, which delayed the final test date to June 5th, 2024, the day when finally Starliner was launched with two NASA astronauts in it, Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams. The mission was scheduled to last only eight days, with a landing date on Earth on June 14th. But instead of the spaceship and the astronauts, what came back on June 14th was a shocking truth. As of July 25th, when we are writing the script, the spaceship is unable to return to Earth, leaving two astronauts stranded in space for 50 days. In the beginning, everything was right. The launch was successful. Starliner detached about 15 minutes after launch. Then it was initially headed for a suborbital path, but used its thrusters to reach orbit around half an hour later. And then flight controllers noticed a major problem. There were two helium leaks in Starliner's propulsion system. This led to shutting down the affected helium lines, which disabled six out of the spacecraft's 28 thrusters. Helium is used to move propellant to the thrusters, which help the spacecraft maneuver and slow down when re-entering Earth's atmosphere. Naturally, with such a helium leak, returning to Earth is impossible. But while en route to the IS the leaks were not much of a concern. And those were not the only problems in Starliner. During its journey to the ISS, five of the RCS thrusters also failed. The mission team fixed four of them with resets and tests while keeping the spacecraft safely away from the station. The cause of the thruster issue is still unknown, but it might be related to data errors. Finally, on June 6, Starliner reached the space station safely and successfully docked with the ISS Harmony module nearly 27 hours after launch, including including time loss due to a thruster issue. Upon arrival, astronauts Wilmore and Suni Williams joined the ISS crew, which included Jeanette Epps, Michael Barrett, and Oleg Kononenko. On their first day, they transferred cargo and emergency supplies and installed a new pump for urine processing. They also tested Starliner as a backup safety option, running it on low power for future use and began various maintenance and research tasks. By June 12, Wilmore had checked the cargo and repaired the station's bathroom, while Williams focused on gene sequencing. Finally, on June 14th, the landing day, the spacecraft was supposed to undock and return to Earth. 
but this was the time when the ultimate twist came out. The astronauts suddenly realized that the Starliner was not prepared for its return flight due to helium leaks. Helium is essential for the spacecraft's propulsion system, and any leaks can prevent the fuel tank from being properly pressurized. Without proper pressurization, the spacecraft would become unstable, and its thrusters could fail during atmospheric re-entry. This instability would lead to a loss of control, killing all the crews inside. To address these issues, the return date was rescheduled to June 22nd. This extension allowed engineers time to investigate why five out of 28 maneuvering thrusters failed and to fix the helium leaks, which are impacting the thrusters. On June 28th, a NASA Boeing team began ground tests on an RCS thruster to address thrust problems. Besides, NASA also announced that they won't approve Starliner for flight until the thruster problems are resolved completely. At this, Boeing has pushed back against claims that the Starliner spacecraft and its astronauts are stuck in space. Because if the Starliner stays docked to the ISS, for up to 50 days, it would likely impact its first official mission set for February 2025. But there is uncertainty about whether NASA will certify Starliner in time. And even if it's certified, the Starliner might only complete a few missions before the ISS is retired in 2030. But to everyone's surprise, on July 15th, NASA made a bold move that no one expected. They offered SpaceX $267,000 for emergency response research for this. This means if Starliner faces problems returning to Earth, SpaceX's Crew Dragon might be able to assist with a rescue mission, because they are focused on planning to avoid astronauts being stranded on the ISS. Clearly, Boeing has made a bad impression on NASA. Although by this time some thrusters of Starliners have been fixed, still the worries persist about their performance during re-entry. To worsen the matter, the Starliner spacecraft's return process includes getting rid of its service module, which makes it difficult to identify problems after it lands. So NASA and Boeing are still testing the spacecraft, ensuring the astronauts on the space station are safe. Boeing has tested backup thrusters, but indicated still some more tests are needed. Naturally, NASA is considering if they can quickly launch Crew Dragon to arrange a homecoming mission for two astronauts. But why is NASA relying on SpaceX's Crew Dragon so much? Is it really better than Starliner? Now let's compare both. Starliner is an advanced space capsule designed for autonomous operation capable of independently docking with the ISS. The interior is almost the same as you see in Boeing's commercial aircraft, featuring manual controls and large displays for essential data. Its structure is entirely without welding, relying only on interlocking parts for consistency and reliability. The capsule includes 12 reusable command module thrusters for precise ice maneuvering and a service module equipped with static solar panels for power. Additionally, the service module has thrusters from Aerojet Rocketdyne, 20 OMV thrusters for orbital maneuvers and attitude control, and 28 RCS thrusters for maneuvering and providing reboost to the ISS. Now, if you look at the equivalent model of SpaceX, they have the Dragon capsule, which was developed for cargo transport to the ISS under NASA's commercial resupply services contract in 2010. Building on this success, SpaceX adapted the design for an Earth orbit capsule under NASA's commercial crew program. Its early prototypes included thruster pods for the launch abort system, although this was not the final design. On May 30th, 2014, Elon Musk unveiled the Dragon 2 capsule, also known as Crew Dragon. This capsule features a sleek black and white exterior, a spacious interior, and minimalist seats. It has eight Eight highly throttleable hypergolic engines called Super Dracos, which are 3D printed from Inconel, allowing for powered descent and landing. The control surfaces are mostly touchscreen, facilitating updates through software patches. Why such high tech? Because SpaceX envisioned using the Crew Dragon variant for a Mars mission, which they call Red Dragon. The plan was to launch it on a Falcon Heavy rocket into a Trans Mars injection trajectory 
arrow breaking into Mars's atmosphere and landing propulsively. However, NASA's preference for traditional parachutes over propulsive landing for crew safety led SpaceX to discontinue this technology and shift their focus to their next generation Martian rocket Starship. Now, Crew Dragon's trunk serves four main functions, holding solar panels, holding radiators, providing mounts for winglets during a launch abort scenario, and acting as an unpressurized cargo hold. This design allows Crew Dragon to deliver supplies, exterior modules, or experiments to the space station accessible via the Canadarm. As we already mentioned, SpaceX and Boeing each received $2.6 billion to develop Crew Dragon and Starliner, respectively. But then SpaceX opted for extensive system testing, while Boeing focused more on simulations and paperwork to qualify onboard systems. The difference is now clear in front of the world. While speculating on the winner might be unnecessary at this point, it's pretty evident who is actually leading the competition, isn't it? What's your view on this? Do you think Starliner can make a quick comeback from this situation? Drop your thoughts and opinion in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more insights into the future of space exploration. And beyond Starliner or Crew Dragon, if you're also interested to know about the real reason SpaceX developed the Falcon 9, click on this video.